just three minutes after eight. So I think we're going to get uh, our program underway tonight. So my name is Brad Sertan. I am the Director of Enrollment and Marketing here at Fordham Prep. Uh, thrilled to welcome you all tonight to the first in our virtual panel uh, for the admission season. You know, we do these to offer the opportunity to really do a deep dive into some really important aspects of the Fordham Prep experience. You know, we'll have some on our ice team program and our global education initiative. Um, certainly some time to talk about faith and service at Fordham Prep, but I think it's very appropriate that we start uh, this year's programming with student support and talking about the ways uh, Fordham Prep supports our students um, and certainly talking about our comprehensive four-year school counseling program that Fordham Prep offers. And I'm thrilled to be joined tonight by two colleagues, um, Ms. Maureen Martinez, who's the Director of School Counseling, and Ms. Molly Lieberman. I'll let them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their experience at the Prep, uh, and then we'll start the presentation. Good evening, parents and caregivers. Such a pleasure to be here and to have the opportunity to speak to prospective families. Uh, so as Brad said, my name is Maureen Martinez. This is actually my 20th year here at Fordham Prep, uh, working in the counseling department. Um, I've been the director since 2014. I also had, um, my husband and I had the great good fortune to be able to also have three of our four sons attend. So I'm a parent alum, classes 14, 17, and 18. So I learned even more just about the Fordham Prep experience as my boys went through and all of their experiences were, were very different. Good evening, I'm Molly Lieberman. I am a school counselor, like Brad mentioned. This is my ninth academic year at Fordham Prep. And I'm also the co-coordinator of the Academic Support Center, which um, I will go into detail later in this presentation. Awesome, thanks ladies. And thanks for being with us tonight. So a little bit of ground rules. So this is a webinar. Um, uh, obviously we can't uh, see or hear our prospective families who are out there. Um, I have disabled the chat, but if you look below, uh, there's an opportunity to use the Q&A feature of, of the Zoom uh, program we're on tonight. So please ask questions. You know, as you might imagine, we're gonna go through a couple of different uh, pieces of material tonight. So we might answer your question, but we are uh, more than happy to take some questions. I'll be curating our questions tonight. So I'll be able to answer them within the chat or direct them to Maureen or to Molly uh, during the program. So please definitely use the chat. Um, I ask that you just give us a few minutes to maybe get going into the programming. You might see some things that, that we've already answered. But again, the chat is disabled, but the Q&A please definitely use and we'll try to get uh, uh, to everybody's question and answer everything fully, as well as try to be cognizant of everybody's time and, uh, and have us out of here by nine o'clock tonight. So with that, I am going to share my screen and begin our presentation for the night. Ms. Martinez and Ms. Lieberman, can you verify you can see the screen? And you can see you yeah. can see each other? All right. <laughs> Ms. Martinez, take it away. Sure. So first we thought we'd tell you a little bit about our team. So as I mentioned, I'm the director and part of a team of five school counselors. So we're all master's level counselors and we have academic, um, we have expertise in a variety of areas. So you can see listed there, academic. So also know that first and foremost, the role of a school counselor is academic in nature. But of course, as a Jesuit school, Cura Personalis is a very uh, important part of the mission, as well as what we do that translates to care of the whole person. So beyond academic, uh, it's also the personal social, the college career, mental health as well. And we also do a variety of prevention education. So uh, suicide, um, and we address other mental health topics with the students as well. Uh, crisis counseling and student programming included in that. Um, moving down, so similar to the academic departments that use a variety of platforms in the classroom and with the students, we do the same. And in a moment, I will tell you about the core of our program, which places us actually in the classrooms with all of our assigned counselees. But just to see the uh, platforms there that we use. So Maya Learning, this is Fordham Prep's um, student data, college search, and a college application platform that the students get introduced to for the first time in sophomore year. Well, they will do um, a variety of things, but the things that they seem to like the most and we do as well is a series of self-assessments. So a personality assessment, values assessment, 
um, and as well as do college and um, career searches. PowerSchool is the platform where grades are posted, so very, very important. Students, of course, have access to that, as do parents, which is very helpful as well. And Schoology is the platform that we use in class. So it's a place to uh, post homework, but also to use within the classroom and organize resources as well as resources between classes. Um, and it's a team approach. So we work, of course, very closely with one another, um, but also in the counseling center, there are the college counselors as well as the clinical team. So together they form the totality of the uh, counseling department. Ms. Martinez, can I interject with a quick question? Yeah. How, are, uh, how are boys assigned a school counselor and how for how long do they keep a counselor? That's a great question. So it's kind of random assignments uh, when they come into the school. But years ago, we understood the importance of intentionally almost manipulating their schedules and sometimes by hand so that school counselors would be able to follow students from freshman year through senior year. So of course that allows us to develop critical relationships with the boys, but also with the families as well. So we're able to do that. Thank you. Sure. Okay, let me just move my little pictures here. So the counseling program, so let me tell you a little bit about this. So these are some of the adjectives at the top that we use to describe our program. So comprehensive, developmental, and preventative. And I would also add scaffolded, meaning as we move from year to year, the concepts and the program that um, we offer to the boys build on one another. As I said early, group counseling, which think of as like a class, because it's a class that's embedded into all the student schedule, is the heart of the program. Um, <clears throat> so for example, with freshmen, in terms of the frequency with which we meet with the ninth graders, it's the highest. So we meet with them every cycle and a cycle basically translates to every six days. So every six days with the same small group of students and the groups are typically between maybe seven to 12 students with their assigned counselor, um, we meet every cycle. So that's a total of 24 classes per year. And of course, that's a lot of access. So what that means for us is we have over time developed a really robust curriculum that speaks to the needs of ninth graders. Um, and uh, counseling class is also offered in all grade levels. So school counselors are in the classroom with grades ninth, 10th, and 11th. And then our model in the second half of 11th grade, students will get a second counselor so that's when the intensive college counseling process begins. So again, that's the second half of junior year and of course into senior year as well. So group counseling, again, is a class that's offered in all four years by both school and college counselors. Um, in addition, as you would imagine, we offer one-on-one -on -one counseling. So individual care, as it says, for all students in every grade. I'll also mention um, just a few years ago, we got so fortunate that we, Sport and Prep built a beautiful counseling center. Um, and that space is not only a really user-friendly, um, calm hub of activity where the students can come and sit and quietly and do work um, with, to meet with us, but it brings all of us together. So again, college school and the clinical teams are all in the space on the third floor across from the chapel. <clears throat> in addition, as you can see in the last two, bullets. Um, suicide prevention education is a community-wide initiative at Fordham Prep. So we screen every student in every grade every year. So it is a big task. Uh, it's already begun. Actually, we've begun this already with the freshmen, and this will proceed all the way through to 12th grade. So by the end of the first half of the year, we will have screened every student. And in addition, our overall mental health programming includes other screenings as needed. So that would be for anxiety, for depression, and for substance use abuse. Um, and lastly, I mentioned our clinical team, so I'll tell you a little bit about that. Fordham Prep has three licensed uh, clinical social workers um, that work closely, of course, with us, with students, as well as with families. Ms. Martinez, can I interject with another question? Um, yeah, please. You know, how, how often can students 
take advantage of seeing their counselor. Obviously, they're dedicated times for oh, yeah. for you to meet as a group and and individually when you might call them in. But you know, can yeah. a student see counselors more if if he would like to? Yes, great question. Yeah, and I would say virtually every class, I remind, well, I kind of ask them, guys, where am I located? How do you find me? So this is me testing the knowledge, but I repeat the knowledge all the time about how they can reach me. So I would say most, well, I would say most often students will outreach with an email. So they may ask a question, they may ask to meet, um, but they also know, as I mentioned, we have this lovely counseling center, walk-ins, so to speak, are fine. Um, I would say that all five of us are always there early. So we're there before the start of the day. So that's a great time to catch us. We're always there late. There's a consultation period for kind of all faculty at the end of the day. I would say most counselors are in our offices beyond that. Um, and also for some students, it's part of a lunch period. It's part of a free period or it's part of a study hall. It's rare that we pull them out of academic classes for the obvious reasons. Um, so with all those gaps, there's plenty of time for students to connect to their counselors. And certainly if some students are in need of more help than the average, then that help could be provided. And, and, how, and, and what kind of collaboration goes on with our, our clinical team, with our social workers? How does that, uh, how do students get involved in that? What's that yeah. process like? Yeah, that's, a, that's a, a great question. You know, sometimes I think students and families may need some more support. So for a student, for example, who is struggling with a lot of anxiety, um, you know, often the first point of contact would be with the school counselor. Um, but if a school counselor is wanting the student to meet with the school social worker as well, who perhaps then may screen the student, so it's not a diagnostic tool, but it would be like an anxiety screening. And if, the counselor and the clinician are feeling like parents should be connected to, then we connect with the family. So I know I use the word collaboration um, between school counseling and clinical teams, and this is true, but I didn't mention, so I'll do this now, <clears throat> excuse me, that a huge part of our school is collaboration with families. So I always think that's so important to tell families of freshmen, right? Because sometimes you just don't know what's appropriate in the culture of a school. So I am constantly telling that to parents. I describe our, you know, myself sometimes as the quarterback, you know, so to parents and caregivers of our youngest students, if you don't know who to go to, you can always go to me as the school counselor. And if I'm not the right person, I can direct you to the right person. So we're very much aware that the parents and caregivers are going through a tr transition just like their sons are, which means they need the time and care just like their boys do. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so freshman group counseling, we thought it might be interesting for you to see the main topics that we cover, again, in group counseling nine. So again, this is the counseling class, same small group of freshmen that meets every six days. So the first few bullets, I would say that make they make up the bulk of roughly the first half of the year. So certainly transition is a big issue for every student, whether you came in knowing 12 kids or whether you came in knowing zero kids. It's a big part of what they're coming in with. Um, in terms of connection and community building, we really built this out in a significant way when COVID hit because it became obviously so difficult and kids really suffered with lack of connection, lack of connection and lack of community. And these, these exercises and activities that we created worked so well that we've kept them. <laughs> we continue to build on them because the boys really enjoyed it, right? So if we're saying it's so important to connect and build community and how you show up in the different spaces is so critical to your own experience, then we need to bring that into the classroom. So we're always getting them up and involved with one another. So not just them with us, but them with one another, which of course they enjoy very much. Um, academic skill building is huge. So we spent a lot of time on building, um, I would say organization, time management, task initi initiation, giving them a tons of strategies, techniques, tools, apps, and we all organize it on Schoology so that the boys can access everything we use in class, they can use at home. And then we take, you know, these same, um, kinds of information and then we share it with the parents 
um, in the later fall. So moving on back to the list, I had mentioned prevention education. So substance abuse prevention education is provided by us as well as one of our licensed social workers um, works with the PE program and brings uh, substance abuse prevention education into the PE as well as us. Suicide prevention, um, this is a multi-lesson evidence-based curriculum called Lifelines that we bring, uh, we bring to the freshmen in the first part of the year. Uh, standardized testing is spoken about with a light touch. We do not do a lot of college counseling at all with the freshmen because we focus on transition in, uh, transition out. The reason why we talk about standardized testing to explain is that all students in grades nine through 11 take some form of the PSAT. They actually just took it last week. So the freshmen took the PSAT 8-9. So we spoke to them about what it is and prepared them for that. And lastly, that last bullet um, is a really great way to wind down the year. Um, the summer before the boys enter ninth grade, they're required to read Sean Covey's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. And that activity comes out of that book. So we will spend a couple of lessons in which the boys are kind of pulling together a lot of the activities and information and knowledge that they gained to craft a personal mission statement based on values, strengths, and goals. So they create it, they write it, and then they share it. And that's kind of how we wind down the, the freshman year counseling class. Ms. Martinez, what do you think, you know, I, I spend a lot of time talking to prospective families about the freshman year experience, especially what you guys do in yeah. the counseling department. What What do you think is the um, sort of the most common, uh, flaw is the wrong word, what, what, what's the most common uh, sort of skill set that f current Fordham Prep freshmen need to build upon uh, to be successful in their freshman year? Yeah, I would say probably organization and time management. Um so, you know, I always give props to the kids because they chose Fordham Prep um, and we chose them, right? So every boy is coming in with a certain skill set and a level of potential that is high. Otherwise, they wouldn't be with us, of course. Um, I think it is also true that for, I would say, almost every boy, there is, um, they find themselves at Fordham Prep having to work harder to get the same high grades that they did in the schools that they came from. And um, I say things like the, the more honest you are with yourself about that, the more likely you are to move into understanding the habits that are serving you uh, and the habits that are not serving you. So as mentioned, that book, the Covey book, we unpack that in, in 10, 15 different ways in the beginning of the year reflective activities. We actually look at their grades together. We look at deficiencies together and constantly are asking questions about what's serving you. If something kind of went sideways, what could you or should you have done differently or better? And how can you go about doing that now? So, you know, we want to normalize making mistakes and even failing are part of learning and growth, right? So we don't want students to be afraid of that. We want them to mine their experiences for lessons, apply them and improve. So that's really the whole attitude behind much of what we do as it relates to academic skill building. And if I, I could just jump in, sorry. Yeah, please. If I could also just jump in. Um, also, so time management organization is a huge one. I also working with freshmen have learned that they really need to hone in on their study habits on how to prepare for quizzes yeah. and larger assessments like tests. Um, they are, they admit in, you know, in class that they have done quite well in their middle and grammar schools, which is not surprising since they find themselves at Fordham Prep. But um, I don't know if they've necessarily really needed to prepare for a large assessment or, you know, know how to study. So that's definitely something that we work on with the academic skill building, like creating these healthy study habits um, and really how to prep for larger assessments. Awesome. Thank you. Can, uh, Ms. Martinez, can you also talk, uh, you know, a little bit about one of my favorite things that you guys do, the stress management and mindful awareness practices that uh, are now a real big part of the counseling program? Oh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Sertan. That was on my list and I forgot <laughs> to mention, you know how much I love that. Yeah. So just um, brief background. So, of course, when the pandemic hit, everybody 
in, had an experience in uh, increased stress and anxiety. And certainly we saw that with our students. So a few years ago, um, we actually centered the entire junior year curriculum around anxiety, stress, stress management, and mindful awareness practices. And it went so well, and the students were reporting such big benefits. We kind of looked at each other and said, we've got to bring this to the other students. And then it was, well, we need to really bring this to the faculty and the staff as well. So we created what we now call the Mindful Awareness Practice Program. The acronym is the MAP. So that began in junior year classes and since then is spread kind of throughout the whole community. So with freshmen now, this year for the first time, we're bringing mindful moments into virtually every class. So it's simple things, you know, like how to anchor with your breath, um, doing a two minute body scan, as well as many others. So it's it's some often how I begin and also sometimes how I end classes uh, with freshmen. And now this year, um, we have a number of faculty because people have been hearing what we're doing and they're hearing the students respond. So we have a cohort of faculty now who are gonna be trained on a tool called Calm Classroom, which is gonna begin probably in the next few weeks. And now there's gonna be additional faculty who are gonna be bringing mindful moments into the academic classrooms. And really the, the response from the students has been phenomenal. And we've worked with the retreat programs and the athletic department, global ed and more. So I really think that this is something that's gonna kind of infiltrate in a very positive way, the whole community. I agree. All right, let's, uh, let's move on. So this is where I will jump in. Um, the academic support group or academic support center is open um, every Tuesday and Thursday after school for two hours. So it's open from three to five um, starting in September through final exams. And essentially um, it's a space where students can come and it's a quiet place to get work done, to study. And we also have peer tutors available. And so um, the peer tutors can work with the students um, in any of their subjects freshman year and help, you know, help them build these healthy study habits. And um, I think it's really great that it's offered two days a week because it helps create routines by coming each Tuesday and Thursday. It's a drop-in center, so they don't have to stay the entire two hours. Um, they can come get their work done, study, work with your tutor. Um, and again, it's, as Mrs. Martinez said, like a large focus of quarter one for freshmen is really um, study skills and study habits and helping to manage and create new study habits that are gonna help them be successful through freshman year. And so this is really reinforcing that, like coming to the academic support center to either work on their homework or work with a peer tutor. In addition, we have peer tutoring available um, throughout the school day. And so members of the National Honor Society um, sign up to be peer tutors. And so if your son is struggling or needing a little um, extra assistance in any of his subjects, he can request a peer tutor and they would meet um, during a free period, a study hall, a lunch period throughout um, the school day. And so a lot of times students will sign up for a peer tutor, meet with them once a cycle, we're on a six day cycle, and then also come to the academic support center after school um, to either work with another peer tutor or to have a quiet space um, for them to get work done. So the academic support center is actually located right off of the library. And so it's really helping students to build healthy study habits um, they're held accountable as either I'm proctoring or another faculty member and really just keep it, help, holding them accountable, checking in, seeing what they're working on and just making sure that they're, you know, staying focused for the time that they're um, at the academic support center. Um, again, at the academic support center, it just reinforces really um, what they're learning in counseling class. Um, in terms of study skills, time management, organization, and then they can work with myself or the other co-coordinator um, for additional help with the executive functioning skills. Ms. Lieberman, can you talk a little bit about how we build study halls into uh, our academic schedules, especially for freshmen? Yes, and so um, 
we are on a six day cycle. So we have A through F day and we have six periods a day. And then two of the days, there's uh, four periods because they're longer um, blocks. But every freshman has um, a few study halls built into their schedule. So these are um, mandatory, you know, their attendance is taken and they will have study halls, like I said, built into their schedule where they can um, work quietly on work, get homework done, get ahead, study um, their quiet spaces. There's always a proctor in there uh, making sure that, you know, they're staying on task. <clears throat> but we found it to be really important because it's, again, reinforcing um, getting work done in the free moments of your day. And so in addition to, you know, lunch period, which is built into their schedule every day, they're going to have a few study halls throughout the cycle, um, which we have seen has been really um, helpful, especially for students who, as we know, are really busy after school. They have a lot of after school commitments. And so this is a space where they can prioritize getting the work done um, or studying before an exam that's coming up the same day. You know, I'll just add something here because I found it so interesting. We, because of COVID, we needed to reduce how many students were in a single space in the commons, for example. And what we learned was it was so effective that the boys were telling us that they really liked the study hall period. So of course, Molly and I mentioned that we proctor as well they are diligently working. You know, it's like a 32 minute period, but man, are they moving to get something done? Either is something done that day or to get something done so they don't have to do it when they get home after football practice. So they've really, really been effective. So I think this is gonna be a Fordham prep staple. Yeah, and it's built into freshman and sophomore schedules. So freshmen and sophomores have, have um, the study halls built into their schedule. And what I also should have mentioned, um, you know, with all these study skills and creating healthy study habits, you know, a big chunk of quarter one is, you know, reviewing the seven habits of highly effective teens, which Mrs. Martinez said was our summer assignment. Um, but really, we collaborate with parents. So we send parents, um, you know, some of the tools that we're using so we can partner with them um, in order to support these healthy habits, you know, in school with study halls and things like that. It also, the work has to be done at home. So we um, like partnering with families on this one. And um, it really started during COVID, um, the study skills and habits, like having more class time for this. And then we just realized how important it was to keep them in our curriculum, these classes, and then to also partner with families. So sending our tools and information about what we're doing in class so that you can help support them at home. So it's really a collaborative effort between the counseling uh, department and families. Ms. Martinez, speaking of academic support, you know, one of the questions we get from a lot of families is support for students that might have a documented 504 or IEP. Uh, which we do in, in some ways. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that process, what we offer and, and what parents could expect if their son has uh, an IEP or 504 and attends Fordham Prep? Mm -hmm. So I, I think that one of the bigger questions that I receive has to do with extended time. So to clarify what we do and what we don't do. Um, so we do offer extended time on testing for our midterm and final exams. Um, but not on any other exams besides that. Um, so in addition, sometimes um, I know that it's recommended that boys be seated at the front of the class. So of course that's provided. Of course, it's a one-to-one -one teaching. So, you know, all the boys are on their tablets. Um, trying to think of what else. Um, anything else? Those are those are the, the big ones that we offer. Yeah. You know, I Oh, oh, go ahead. Just go ahead I was on. just going to say, those are the accommodations we offer. Um, right. We do ask families um, to send the IEP or 504 plan um, right. to our assistant principal for academics so that, that they'll review the um, information and they um, will send a confidential note to teachers to let them know that the student either has an IEP or a 504 plan, um, that extended time may be granted, and then any other pertinent information that teachers should just be aware of having the student in their class. So it's almost just a little bit of a summary of the IEP and or 504 plan that's sent confidenti confidentially to teachers. Mm -hmm. I, I think, um, and Ms. Martinez, you might have the stats at your fingertips more than I do, but but I, I believe it's somewhere around seven or eight percent of our student body have some sort of accommodation or mm. or get or get extended time. So so there are boys in the building, 
um, who, who definitely do have 504s or IEPs. I will say from an admission standpoint, if you do have a question about that, and, and as we wrap up, we'll certainly be sharing information about how to contact if you want to talk to Ms. Martinez. You know, we often say if you're comfortable sharing it in the admissions process, to send us a copy of your 504 or IEP. Yes. And internally, we can review it and um, and then have a discussion within the admissions process even before decisions go out. Um, I, I will say one of the unique aspects of our student support mechanisms, which obviously the counseling department is really a huge part of, is the mentor group program. Uh, Ms. Martinez, can you talk a little bit about what a mentor group is and what type of support they provide for students? Yeah, I mean, the synonym I always think of for mentoring is homeroom. But it's it's homeroom with a lot of love. So, you know, if you're interested or you know about Fordham Prep, you probably understand that a hallmark of a Jesuit education is relationships, right? So um, the teachers, this is my my opinion and experience, the teachers who work with freshmen are there by choice. They're there because they love to cultivate relationships with our newest students. And they understand clearly that the developmental needs of a freshman are very different than an upperclassman. So I always get a kick out of seeing that connection when I see the faculty who connect with the ninth graders. So um, they meet with them often. Um, they will do simple but big things. So small activities to create a groupness, to create connection between the boys. Um, sometimes they do have specific activities that could wrap itself around service or other important aspects of um, the school, but boys will talk about their mentoring experience. So I, I will usually spend a couple of minutes asking like, who's your mentor? What are you doing in the classroom? Um, one teacher was watching, they got on a kick of watching episodes of The Office. So you would go by the classroom and you would hear episodes of The Office. So I, I feel like our teachers bring a lot of their personalities into the room and they're open to letting the boys um, get to know them. And of course, they're uh, facilitating the same openness between their peers. So it's a, it's a special, important time of freshman year. And um, for the most part, a student's mentor will also be someone they have uh, as a teacher. And so they're right. seeing this mentor for AM attendance, as well as, um, you know, in their academic subject most times it will be someone they have as a teacher. And so they're just, it's, you know, it's another touch point with an adult in the building um, yeah. and they see them pretty frequently. So every day in AM attendance, and then of course, uh, you know, in their academic um, subject, as well as there is a mentoring period that's built into our schedule. And so um, once a cycle, the mentoring group will get together and, you know, have time as a group outside of the AM attendance. Mm -hmm. All right, we have one more just uh, program to talk about, um, and that oh. is one of my favorite things, the Freshman Counseling Care Package. What is the Freshman yeah. Counseling Care Package? Yeah, <laughs> and so um, a lot of time and dedication has been put into the Freshman Counseling Care Package, which is sent to all incoming freshmen before the first day of school. So sometime at the end of August, early September, before the first day of school. And it was... Um, cultivated through a counselor in our department. And it really is just tips to help make freshman year successful. And so as you go through the freshman counseling care package, there's different um, sections of it. One of it, one of the first section is getting to know your school counselor. So there's, um, you know, cute little bio on each of the school counselors. By the time they get the freshman care, care package, counseling care package, they'll know who their counselor is because we will be on their schedule. Um, another portion of it is the transition to student life. And so this uh, portion has videos from upperclassmen. Um, one of the examples is what's in my bag. And so um, it's a older student, you know, giving advice to incoming freshmen about what they pack in their bag each day to be um, prepared and organized. Um, another little video is about balancing school and sports and activities. And so again, that time management, and it's really helpful, I think, for incoming freshmen to hear from the upperclassmen. Um, a third section would be the academic transition. So we are providing, before they even start school, study tips um, with some recommended apps that they can download on their phone to help them stay organized. And again, that goes off of some of the things they would have read about in Seven Habits for Highly Effective Teens. There is a section on the social transition so, you know, encouraging incoming freshmen to get involved um, early on in their experience. 
There's um, a health and wellness section, which um, as Mrs. Martinez mentioned, has things about our mindful awareness practices. And so some things to help stress management. And um, again, we share some tools and apps in that section. And then the last one is an FAQ section. And so this is with um, the attendance and dean's office as the where the attendance and dean's office is located on the first floor right off of our commons or cafeteria. They're often fielding a lot of questions uh, the first few days of school. And so this FAQ section is just for freshmen to kind of know who to go to, what to do, some of the policies. Um, and so really the freshman counseling care package is just a welcome to Fordham Prep tips and tools um, in order to be successful. And, you know, the counselors really want to partner with parents um, right off the bat. And so this is kind of our first entree in collaborating with parents. So you can also see what we do um, with your students freshman year. And, you know, of course, we want freshmen to get off to a good start to have a successful year. Um, obviously, challenges will come up with the transition. So, you know, we always invite parents, especially freshman parents, to partner with us early on um, to share information like the 504 or IEP or any other pertinent information that you think um, can help us work with your son through his uh, freshman year. Awesome. So, so that sort of takes us through our deck. I'm actually going to stop our share. If anyone wants to uh, uh, put a question into the queue that that uh, Ms. Martinez and Ms. Lieberman can answer, you know, but but as those are sort of coming in, um, I, I will ask Ms. Martinez to put on her parent hat uh, as a Fordham Prep parent three times over and and talk a little bit about um, what you found unique in the Fordham Prep experience mm -hmm. for your boys and speaking to prospective parents, you know, what what. Uh, I mean, obviously you worked here, but what wanted you to send your boys to Fordham Prep? Sure. Um, so, you know, my boys went to public school, so it was very interesting. They were intrigued about going, but a big part of them was really hesitant, right? Because their friends, the majority of their friends were going to be going to the local public high school. So there was that hesitancy in the beginning. And with the first one who came, I kind of knew I had him by the end of the first week because he came home one day. Uh, I, of course, I asked him how his day was and his response was, mom, I laugh every day. And I was just so intrigued by that. But then in thinking about even my own first year experience on faculty, there is so much humor in the building. Um, and that's something that I've heard repeated by the students. So it is the one of the most common experiences I get when I work with freshmen. I always do an academic check-in. So how are your classes? How are your teachers? I mean, li literally it's a hundred percent with all the freshmen that I've met with so, so far this year. It's, oh no, I love my classes. Oh no, I love my teachers. And they may not be doing well in all their classes, right? Cause they're still figuring it out, but it's, oh no, I love my teachers. <laughs> so um, I think again, going back to what I said earlier, that relational quality um, how we are all intentional about cultivating relationships with the students. I think that for my boys and in my own uh, you know, lived experience, that is the secret sauce of Fordham Prep. I think that's one of the biggest things that makes us us. Um, and all my boys, of course, they graduated, but you know, I would say a couple of weeks into freshman year, they were like, okay, I guess I'll stay. It's great. But I mean, they will all tell you that um, they had a wonderful, wonderful experience and they wouldn't have changed a thing. Thanks for that. Uh, you know, one of the question, one of the questions that we had just picked up on the questions about 504s or IEPs, and Mr. Lieberman mentioned this a couple of times about submitting yeah. it to us in advance. You know, yeah. one of the things that from an admission standpoint, um, it certainly does not, um, it does not affect a student's uh, ability to be admitted if they if they are right. just with a 504 and IEP. You know, it, uh, I would str strongly, strongly urge you to submit one if you have one so we can look at it before the admissions process, because, um, you know, we want to make sure that Fordham Prep is a right is the right fit for your sons and vice mm -hmm. versa. And the only and the best way we can do that is by having some of that documentation and having a very open and honest conversation about it. So yeah. To those families out there who are interested, uh, you know, whose sons have those those uh, documentation. And as I mentioned, about seven to eight percent of our building has some of that. So there are boys in the building like that. But it's it would be a, a wonderful part of the process 
for us to do that. So again, I would strongly urge you to do that. Ms. Martinez looks, uh, you know, has a chance to look through them. Our assistant principal for oh. academics looks at them. And, and again, we're, we're trying to ensure that we're putting all of our students in a place where they can succeed. And that sort of documentation really can only uh, help us in that process. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see if there are any other questions as uh, as well. Um, yeah, this is this is to both of our counselors. Can you talk a little bit about working with high school boys in an all boys environment? Is there something? Is there advice? Is there some something that you've learned over the last couple of years that sort of um, you know m makes it an interesting process or can inform prospective parents on what that that might be like? No, Molly, I'll give that to you. Yeah, so I see the question was, you know, your son may be nervous about coming to an all boys school. Are there dances or events? Um, so we do partner with girls schools. Um, there's definitely um, opportunities, you know, through dances and socials, um, our theater program. So we have um, a musical in the fall and a um, a play in the spring. And so we always invite um, girls schools around um, the area to audition for those. That's definitely a place where, um, you know, they would get the opportunity to interact with the girls' schools. Um, I think, you know, for students who are coming from co-education um, in middle school and grammar school, it is, you know, it is a, um, it is a transition. And um, like with anything, you know, I think they get used to it pretty, pretty soon um, or pretty easily. But again, you know, having, um, you know, all the resources available to kind of talk to your student as as they begin at if they choose to come to Fordham Prep, you know, um, just about the transition in general. And, um, you know, there's different student groups, there's different, you know, opportunities for students to get involved. And so, you know, our goal is always for them to find their place. You know, not every student plays um, a sport. And we have a lot of talented musicians and actors who, you know, who may not have explored those interests in the past. Um, and so, you know, there's not, you know, a typical, there's no such thing as a typical Fordham Prep student. I think um, they, you know, we hope that they kind of find their, their place um, and their group, um, despite it being an all boys school. Mr. Sertan, would you say that the boys get a good snapshot by, by becoming like a ram for a day? So visiting yeah. the school for the day? Yeah, you, you know, um, uh, from an admission standpoint, you know, a, a real way to understand that, especially if they're boys who are coming from co-ed environments and, and wanting to understand yeah. coming into a, uh, a single sex environment, you know, spending a day is the best way to sort of understand mm -hmm. and feel what that's like. Even if it's for a day, I think you, could, you do get a sense of the boys in the building and how comfortable they feel. Um, you know, I, I always say that, um, you know, any single sex uh, environment is about ensuring that our boys can be their most authentic selves uh, inside and outside the classroom um, with while giving them opportunities to interact with peers, female peers from in, in different ways. So um, Ram for a day is always the, uh, as you might imagine, the best way to sort of feel that and understand um, uh, and, and, and understand that as as well. Um, I, I will make a plug to get some your last questions in. Um, if you do have something before we go, it's about a quarter of and, and um, you know, the questions are, are getting lighter and lighter. So if you want to make sure to answer, uh, ask a question, please do. You know, I'll, I'll leave uh, as we start to sort of wrap up. I'll ask Ms. Martinez and Ms. Lieberman the same question. You know, what is your absolute favorite thing about being part of the Fordham Prep community? Again, Brad, it goes back to the relationships for me, you know, so. Um, getting to know the boys um, and being able to do so in the way that we do, you know, um, I already described in detail the counseling model. So how many points of access we have to the students um, continuing that relationship in terms of the one-on-one -on -one counseling in our offices. I'm involved in different students clubs and activities and global ed trips and service trips. Um, and likewise with my colleagues. I'm not necessarily sure why this is true, um, but it's just a special bunch of people and it draws a special group of students, which is why I'm still here after 20 years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, likewise, I just think it's a very supportive community. So 
first off, you know, my first year, just I, I find the faculty to be super supportive um, and really collaborative. So like, I feel very lucky to work in the counseling department and have such a collaborative department where we share ideas and best practices with one another. Um, and like Mrs. Martinez said, seeing students outside of the counseling classroom has always been a highlight for me. So whether it's with, um, I used to coach tennis or um, chaperone retreats, just seeing students, you know, grow and mature over the four years has been really special, um, especially now that we are working with the students for four years, you know, seeing, um, you know, I'm looking at my seniors now, and I can't believe four years ago, they were freshmen, you know, and it, it's just been um, such a joy to see that the growth and maturity. And I think, you know, if your sons haven't done RAM for a day, it's definitely something to consider, because I think when I check in with the Rams, when they visit counseling class, I always say, what are you surprised about? What surprised you most? And they all will say um, how nice the teachers are, which is so great. Mm -hmm. um, and so, mm -hmm. you know, it's been, it's, fun, it's been fun having the Rams in um, my classroom as well, just because we get to ask them some questions. And, um, you know, I always ask them what surprises them. Um, well, uh, with that, um, you know, I will say that this recording, you know, we're going to put it together and have it available for prospective families. Uh, there is a version that we did of this from a couple of years ago uh, that does live on the student support uh, section of the admission site that you can look at as well. But we're going to get this out and, and out to prospective families this week. Um, with that, I want to thank Ms. Martinez and Ms. Lieberman for taking a little bit of time on a Monday night to, uh, to chat with us. Uh, thank you both so, so much. Thanks to all of you, our prospective families.